Okay, welcome to the English language version of the PS5 Teardown. Subscribe to the Linus Wilson channel where we give you the best coverage of the PS5 launch. This is the unofficial version. You don't want to do this at home because this is going to void your warranty and you may get electrical shocks or burns from lasers. This is my man Yashiro Utori. He works for Sony, but I don't. This is a PlayStation 5 at 104 meters wide, 390 height, and 260 millimeters deep. The size is larger than that of the PS4, but resulting in dramatic improvement in the performance in terms of processing power and quietness. The front has a USB Type-C port and a Type-A port with high-speed USB support. The rear side has two Type-A ports with super speed USB support, a LAN port and an HDMI port, and a power port. The two rows on the front side are air vents. The entire rear side is its exhaust port. I will now remove the base. When placed vertically, it is held in place by this screw. Removed screws can be stored in the base. Then use this cap to plug the screw hole. Rotate the stand when placing it on its side. Insert the stand in line with this mark. The white panels on both sides can be removed by the users themselves. Lift the back corner and slide it off. For the other side as well, lift the back corner of the panel and slide it off. This is where the cooling fan is built in. The fan is capable of drawing in a lot of air from both sides. The PS5 has two dust catchers in these two locations. The dust collected in the dust catcher can be vacuumed out through these two holes. For future storage expansion, M.2 interface with the PCI 4.0 support is installed. I will now begin to tear begin tear down a PlayStation 5. Removing the fan. The console is equipped with a large 120 millimeter diameter, 45 millimeter thick double sided air intake fan. I will now remove the casing. This is the Ultra HD Blu-ray drive unit. This unit is completely covered with a sheet metal case and mounted with two layers of insulators to reduce drive noise and vibration when the discs spin. Next I will disconnect the cable leading to the Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1 antenna. Removing the shield,
The CPU has eight cores and 16 threads and runs up to 3.5 gigahertz. The GPU is driven at 2.23 gigahertz and delivers 10.3 teraflops. For its memory, we have installed 8 GGDDR that delivers a maximum bandwidth of 448 gigabytes per second. For its storage, we have utilized an onboard 8.825 gigabyte solid state drive instead of an HDD. With the custom SSD controller, read speeds are as fast as 5.5 gigabytes per second at a raw data transfer rate which significantly reduces the load time of the game. The PS5 SoC is a small die running at very high clock rate. This led to a very high thermal density in the silicone die, which required us to significantly increase the performance of the thermal conductor, also known as the TIM, that sits between the SoC and the heat sink. The PS5 utilizes liquid metal as the TIM to ensure long-term stable high cooling performance. This, we have spent over two years preparing the adoption of this liquid metal cooling mechanism. Various conceivable tests have been conducted during the, its, its adoption process. This is the PS5's heatsink. Like PS3 and PS4, it uses a heat pipe, however the shape and airflow made it possible to achieve the same performance as a vapor chamber. This is the power supply unit rated at 350 watts. What you see here are all of the parts of the PlayStation 5. Subscribe to the Linus Wilson channel where we give you the tips and tricks to get a PS5. PlayStation.